Alright, pack in close, guys. Thank you all for coming. You're the biggest group of the coolest group of nerds on the planet. <laughs> Life on the line, gotta fly my own kite Shoelace tight, every step is a fight Breathe as I speak, cause my words on my right Write what I know, gotta go with the strife Gotta sleep through the night, got a bird under wing Gotta fly through the flight Life on the line, fly my own kite Gotta see with the sight, got a lens made of luck Even hate is a drug, man I really had enough Of these pharmaceuticals, dirt on my cute Hello and welcome to Vortex Presents Seattle Soundscape. Today our guest is a friend of the show, Alterations, a hip-hop project out of Kirkland whose latest EP is called Kites and is available on CD and digital on Bandcamp. Now one thing that's pretty interesting about this release is that all of these covers are one of a kind. They're handmade, right? Yes. Uh, so what, what, what made you want to make each individual copy as opposed to simply just having one official cover that you just copy-paste? Uh, like a common theme through this entire project is doing things out of necessity not necessarily because like I want to but because I have to and then the want is created like it's just I was just getting cardstock cardboard paper not cardboard but um, like card paper so it's a little thicker than normal and then I was laying it out and I really like uh, big canvas work so I just lay out a big sheet of paper right and I just do sort of like a Jackson Pollock-esque um, adding of pigment and just splattering of paper of um, abstract paint and then trying to draw like kites or like a sky and then cutting it into smaller little vignettes for the album art um, it's a cheap way about going doing things and uh, it, 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 it was fun and uh, yeah so like I didn't I, I didn't have the means to make the album art any other way like I, I didn't necessarily know how I should like I didn't, the, the hardest part was figuring out the dimensions. It's like something like five by five inches. Yeah. Um, and then t to fit the sleeves I was using. And then from then on, I just decided to like add the paint and stuff like that. And yeah. so it was sort of gradual, the decision. Yeah, it was, sh what's the word? Short notice. And, um, and it was like a gradual idea that kind of built upon itself. I, I, I realized I wanted to do like a hard copy sort of thing. And um, I had the sleeves in mind, and uh, it all fell into place. Some of the art ended up really cool. Now, you mentioned that you have uh, struggles with bipolar disorder, and that music is considered your therapy. Now, how do you think themes of men mental illness sort of show up in your music, especially this EP? Um, one, one line that I have is, uh, dirt on my cuticles digging through the bullshit and um, man I'm really sick of these pharmaceuticals the meds that I've been having to take like a lot of the times like just to clear one thing up like people talk about oh I have a mental illness and then they say oh I, I have bipolar disorder and they they you know just because they say they've had some manic episode a couple of times like yeah. they might not actually be diagnosed but uh, I've ended up hospitalized and stuff like that and like it was a serious change in my life that sort of like it was it was a red light for me and whatnot and and so the medicine is hard because it changes your body physically <sighs> I've gained a lot of weight I've like lost my balance I can't skate as much as I used to but you know the music has been very therapeutic and like some lines come out and also like I make my own beats and the process the monotonous process from starting to find a sample to like adding drums to doing last minute finishing touches that that slow process is a way for me to like recenter and sort of zen zen out and and focus on me it, it takes my manic episodes and my depressed episodes to like a stagnant level of just like zen you know um it's not this project has not been easy because uh yeah, that's that's another story, I guess. Uh, do, I, do you want to elaborate on what you mean by sort of how this project hasn't been really easy for you? Uh, like, the mental illness and stuff is, like, the biggest change in my life currently. Yeah. And so it's um, it's been tough to write. Like, the lyrics haven't been coming. The beats are something that are always there, but, like, I think I, I have been not appreciating my work as much as I used to. I think, like, this isn't as good. I've been really insecure about uh, 
this last project, which everybody's saying is great, and I appreciate that, you know, but like, it was hard work. It was really like, damn, I don't want to write this verse. Do I like what I'm saying? Is this all right to say? Does this beat sound nice? Does, is, are these levels okay? And so it was a lot of guess and check and second guessing myself until I had to be like, you know what, fuck it. Like, I know that this is good somewhere in my heart, even though like my meds are making me feel that it's not or my mood is in a place that is negative. Uh, I had to, here's, here's a coined word. I had to learn to accentuate the positive. You know, like focus on all right, the little tiny wins of the production process. Yeah. Now you said that uh, performing uh, is a positive rush of sorts for you, uh, and I noticed that when comparing your live performances to your studio versus, uh, your studio tracks are melancholy and dark, while your live performances sound a lot brighter, uh, despite the music's original tone, which sort of like fits in with the melancholy and the darkness. Uh, do you think that this is sort of a purposeful contrast, or is this like an unintended side effect of the live performances? Hmm, I think that's an interesting inference. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, certain tracks I had, like like Alex Palmer, my studio engineer and partner yeah. in crime, he'd be like, hey, Aleron, you should try like going to a more melancholy place with your vocals on this one. And I'd be like, oh, you're right, that might fit the tone a little more. So, I, so I'd so do that. And then when I'm performing, it's hard for me not to, like, want to crack a smile or, like, have my original intended vocals come through, which is this, like, feeling of just joy, even on some sadder tracks. Um, and I think that creates, like, an interesting juxtaposition because the lyrical content may be sort of dark and melancholy, Ever since my earlier stuff, that has been like a common theme. It's like, it's not like blatant uh, horrorcore, but it is sort of like, there is like something isn't, something might be wrong going on here. Like something is a little off. It's sort of like spooky satire. Although uh, I just have such a good time performing that I, I do tend to jolly it up a bit, I'd say. <laughs> and your lyrics sometimes do go into the abstract in your songs. Uh, you have a very distinct uh, writing style with the way that you go abstract in your lyrics specifically. That being said, are you concerned with people hearing your music and not understanding what you mean? Uh, <laughs> no. Like... Not really. Um, one thing I said in one of my songs is, you know, like, give a fuck if you feel it or not. I'm, I'm just flowing. And, but, but the thing is, I, I really, I do care what the listener ha thinks and what the listener has to say. Um, here's, when I write, I, early on I got this uh, contrast going and I named it Vague Blatancy. So what I'm saying is vague, but it's blatant at the same time. So it's like, I don't know what he's saying, but he sure is saying it like he means it. Yeah. And that's, uh, I like to keep that mystery in my writing. I hope it comes off as like, wow, that was interesting. I need to ponder that a little more instead of like, I don't get it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but, but don't get me wrong. Some of what I say is actually blatant absurdism. Um, like in a stampede, like Dragon Grampy. I thought that would be a funny visual, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a grandfather being dragged by a stampede of wildebeests. Like, all right, I'm gonna throw that in a little song, like or like in a stampede, like Dragon Grampy, like Dragon Grandfather. There you go, double entendre. Who knows? So, so, like, so like an absurdist double entendre. Yeah. Uh, what, what about the name Alterations? What exactly is the origin of that? Well, my name, Alaron, all of the letters of Alaron exist within Alterations. If you take out all the extra letters, Alaron is there. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he's right. I'm reading on the cue cards, and yeah, he's definitely right. So I thought that was kind of cool. I noticed that, like, one day, and, um... Like, also, we all know what the word alterations means, yeah. but just the fact that my name kind of resides inside of it, um, I thought it was cool. And also, taking a household name and, like, attaching yourself to it is kind of the way of making yourself internationally known. 
yeah. in, in like a very underground circuit that I might only recognize. So every time I drive past a laundromat, I'm like, ah, uh, alterations, <laughs> there I am, you know? Your name's already up in lights. Yeah, because my name is actually there. Like, oh, just cover up the R, you know, just, you know, Aleron, it's, it's there. It's all there. <laughs> As far as uh, your beat making versus your uh, rapping uh, as sort of separate entities, wh where do you find inspiration for both of them, either separately or combined? Uh, that's a long question. Um, <laughs> that's like a long answer to like, because I could dig back. Um, so I've been writing poetry for like a pretty long time. Um, pause. Um, and I'm gonna talk about beats real quick. Uh, actually, Wisdom 206. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. He put out. Uh, he's a Seattle like hip hop producer. I and figured from the 206. Uh, yeah, and um, I heard his project Bass Mentality a couple of years back, and I said, I want to do stuff like that. I want to learn how to sample records from vinyl. I want to do stuff like MF Doom. I like I like that crunchy, dusty, crackly sound, and I like finding obscure samples. And then I said, I have no idea how to do this. I'm gonna find out how to do this on my own. And um, that's when I like ran into some influential people in my life. Um, Kung Fu Grip, early on, uh, very inspired by those guys. Um, that's uh, to start. I, I was behind the scenes, and then I decided I wanted to be like doing my own thing you know uh and yeah what what really inspires me nowadays when it comes to beats is my parents vinyl collection uh they have a really ragtag group of old like opera and random musical theater records that they have lying around and that was my crate you know that's what i was digging through and um then going to valley village getting really just disgustingly dirty records like my 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 record collection is not is not prestigious at all <laughs> like i i often say that my beats are like put together by like duct tape because uh, i use machine i figured out a weird way to like before i didn't know how to directly sample vinyl i was like holding a microphone to the speakers <laughs> going in so it was a record player speakers microphone computer now i finally just have it turntable mixer computer you know yeah and uh so it was just really like figuring it out on my own my own journey like those early days of being exposed to hip-hop and what real and beats like a lot of new job is and stuff hearing these chill beats that you could just write to for hours i often consider myself a like experimental sound enthusiast beat head before MC, but that's changing. Like I would often be like, I just produce beats for fun, and now I'm actually like, no, I make songs. You know, I write. I'm 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 out here doing it, as, <laughs> as and, it, and it's only getting better from here. So, so yeah. that's a uh, an alteration of, in your life, so to speak. That is an alteration <laughs> in my life, so to speak. <laughs> um, man, writing though, uh, like storytelling. And it's tight. Um, I don't know. I the the world of electronic music is kind of frustrating for me because uh, files my files are unorganized. So I lost a lot of like my best songs from writing early on. I have old notebooks that are filled with like the most terrible rhymes. I uh, I remember freestyling with the 40 OZ heads like that's forever dreaming of Zion. That was like the first musical group that I got involved with a bunch of friends from high school. Um, but then I went off on my own. That was my first writing experience and, and whatnot. And uh, you mentioned, uh, correct me if I'm saying this wrong, Wisdom 206? Yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned Wisdom 206 uh, being a large influence on you. Uh, knowing uh, that he is local, knowing that while he uh, does serve like a lot in your life, well, uh, or not, not, not to that extent. Like, not like wisdom. he's like the the grand poobah of right. wisdom here for you, but like like knowing that he did inspire you a, a yeah. enough to sort of start making beats. 
and knowing that he is local, he is underground, and he is sort of almost within reach. Have you ever considered like, like contacting him, whether it was yeah. for, for like, uh, advice, inspiration, or even like, uh, like invitation to collab? Well, back when I was working at Seattle Central Community College, um, I actually reached out to him, asking him for the, because I worked for the College Activities Board, and it was Hip Hop Culture Month. I said, hey, Wisdom, I shot him a Facebook message. Could you come out and do a workshop on making beats? And um, he's like, yeah, yeah, man, I'll, I'll totally do that. And um, it's funny because I dropped the ball and the event didn't happen. And he's like, man, I canceled the show for this event. And oh, I was like, oh, shit. And that's the last time we spoke. Because I was sort of young and naive and a little bit embarrassed about the situation. But dudes like Wisdom, other dudes like Thad Wenatchee, um, he, like, he's, those are older heads that, like, sort of, like, Thad Wenatchee was sort of, like, what Wisdom kind of wasn't. He was more accessible. Like, I actually linked up with that dude and was, came to his studio that he was working at at the time and sort of, like, he said, he to we talked about music. And, um, so there's a couple of influential people. I would, I, I, I would think about reaching out to Wisdom 206, but I also have this huge, like, urge to stay in my own lane. Because I would also love to link up with, like, Crime Wave and stuff, but it's a different genre. Like, I'm kind of pioneering my own little ship right now that, like, is still in its infancy, so it needs to kind of, like, be on its own planet. Yeah. So, uh, we'll hear a performance from you soon, but before we do, one last question. Uh, how do you want to build on this project in the future? You mentioned that you, that this project was sort of in its infancy. And, and so, so how do you want to see it grow and expand? Every time I, I would like to be playing shows regularly. Um, I love the rush of playing shows. Um, I want to play places like Sam in Town. I really want to do like that that U Dub house party scene. <laughs> um, I, I want to, and when that show happens, uh, I want to have physical copies like available. I want to have T-shirts available, and I want to have more songs. Um, also, I'm going to school. You know, I'm taking it back to the basics, and I'm going to school. But w but also, I want to baby these projects, and I want to fight through the writer's block. Um, I, f I find that my best music thus far has come through a time of like extreme writer's block. So I guess just st st steadfast, don't give up, keep working on it, and uh, kind of like realize that I am this person and that I really do this. I'm not this kid that I think I am. Like I'm, I'm an adult and I'm a real artist and I'm trying to establish myself that way. Well, thank you for coming by. Uh, thank you for watching, and next up, you'll hear a performance from Alterations. Yo, shout out to Nurse <laughs> Just dust in a trench coat Of course he had to let go Got up about half past ten of his shadow The tide came in shallow What you mad for? Jumping through a lasso Skip class once and now I'm on a catapult Rochambeau, the scissor sister Kiss her, shoes too tight And now I got a blister But that's alright, it's all part of the picture Which is brew when I drank the mixture I'm talking magic, I'm not talking liquor So how about we gather like house to a pasture fuck all the hatred let's focus on laughter focus on love the one thing that matters yep get, get hyped <laughs> 
In between the lines of a break that was thrown through my window The message said to live slow Walking down the road, no gold, just dust in the trench coat Of course he had to let go Got up about half past ten of his shadow The tide came in shallow But you mad foe, jumping through a lasso Skip class once and now I'm in a catapult Thank you The holes in the wall remind me why I don't drink alcohol My timing might fall on an offbeat Sometimes I might sing on an offkey Off top, that's how I be I see the world in the rear view Driving to where the water is see-through Who knew life could be so fantastic? I am very thankful to have